Hello. Time to uh, complete our lab. We're looking at the formula of a compound lab. So we're trying to determine the formula of a compound for unit 6 balancing reactions in stoichiometry. So in this experiment, uh, you're going to determine the percent of water in a hydrated compound is the idea. So let's take a look at the uh, lab setup. Alright, so we have a crucible and a cover. We're going to clean that in just a second. We have a Bunsen burner, ring stand, clay triangle. To cool it, we have our wire mesh. We have a crucible tongs specifically for moving the crucible around safely. Sparker. Balance with a piece of weighing paper and the uh, magnesium sulfate, which is the hydrated compound that will be measuring the uh, amount of water in this. You could cheat by just reading the label, um, but we'll see how close we get to the actual amount. <clears throat> so the first thing we need to do is uh, clean this crucible. Cleaning a crucible is kind of weird because you actually clean it with heat, so we're going to use our Bunsen burner here. To warm the crucible up. A little bit too much oxygen. So crucibles are made out of porcelain and they um, can sustain really high temperatures, but they're very fragile if you drop them, so you do want to be careful uh, with that. We'll let that warm up while we measure our material. So in the procedure, it says that we should measure between 4 and 6 grams of the hydrated compound. So I'm going to fold my weighing paper. It makes it a little bit easier to move it around. <clears throat> and we'll turn the balance on with it on there, and then it automatically is going to be uh, zeroed out. Okay, so, so if you can see the material, it's a crystalline uh, solid, white in color. 0 0.73, 1.41, 2, and remember we have to be somewhere between 4 and 6 grams, so we got a ways to go. Oops, spilled a little bit. 3, 3.76, let's do right in the middle, we'll do 5 grams. if we can get there. Oops, we're over. So I'm going to take a bit off, put it in the sink so that we don't contaminate the original material. All right, we're at 4.98. Sprinkle a little bit back. 4.99. 4.99. Come on. 5.02. Five exactly. All right, back in the sink with the waste. <clears throat> Keep that scupula in a safe place just in case we need it. So there's our hydrated magnesium sulfate. We'll set that off to the side. Keep it safe. Meanwhile, this has been on there for, well, the video says 4.30, so it's been on there for a couple minutes. It's probably clean. The uh, cleaning process for crucibles, basically you're burning everything off, so you need to get really hot to do that. And now you definitely don't want to touch it, so I'm using the crucible tongs to move it around, and I'm putting it not on the countertop directly, but on the, uh, on 
a ceramic mat for cooling. And we'll leave that there. It's got to cool for about five minutes, uh, otherwise the mass will be totally wrong. So we'll come back after it's cooled off. Okay, it's been cooling for about 10 minutes, so we'll get a weight on the crucible and cover. Move the sodium uh, magnesium sulfate out of the way. <coughs> And we'll turn this on. Now it's really important, even though this is cooled down, not to touch it um, because you can get, well, I'm wearing gloves, but you can get all kinds of crud back on here. But we're going to move that over here. The only reason we have to cool it down is it's really hard to get a weight uh, if it's hot, as you've seen in the past. So we're at a 28.65 for grams. So I'm going to write that down. Uh, 28 point, let's go 6.9, 28.69, it's moving around a little bit. All right, now we're ready to add our already weighed out magnesium sulfate. So I'll put that in there like that, and it's ready for its first heating. If you look at the uh, procedure on page 12, you'll notice that you have an option for up to three heatings. Uh, the first one uh, lasting for 10 minutes, I think, 10 minutes. <coughs> and, uh, <coughs> and then we'll have to cool and weigh it and uh, continue with the other heatings. We'll probably end up having to do two. We'll just see what happens. <clears throat> All right, the uh, container, I have the lid on securely. Oftentimes it's a good idea to have it cracked so that air can escape, uh, but I don't want any material to kick out at me, so I'm going to leave it on so I don't lose anything. And uh, I'll cut back after uh, 10 minutes so you can take it off and uh, get the mass. All right, <clears throat> so that's been heating for 10 minutes now. Uh, we're going to turn the heat off, turn the Bunsen burner off from the valve, and then we're going to remove it from heat. Now, the crucible tongs actually have a little knock in them to hold on to just the crucible, um, so you can grab the lid and the crucible together, but you might lose some material that has stuck up on the top surface of the crucible. So I'm going to try to use the crucible tongs in this way. There we go. And that's going to sit there and cool for another five to ten minutes um, before you can get an accurate mass measurement. Um, just to review the measurements we've taken so far, we had Measured the uh, oops, sorry. We had measured the mass of crucible and cover after cleaning at 28.69 grams, and I weighed out the uh, magnesium sulfate to four grams uh, exactly. So now we're going to see after the first heating how much um, you know the mass has changed, and then we'll do a second heating for sure, and then we'll just have to see if we need a third heating or not, uh, because if the first and second heatings are relatively similar in mass, then you can forego the third heating. It's not, you know, you've already lost all your mass in the first two heatings, so you shouldn't have to do a third one. Um, and then from that information, you'll be able to calculate all the data and results um, for the experiment and see what the final formula is for the hydrated magnesium sulfate. Alright, so it's been five minutes now, and we'll see if uh, we can get an accurate mass after the first heating. So, transfer this to the balance carefully, and we're at 31.38, 31.38, uh, great, alright. And we'll take that right off of there. 
and we'll go for the second heating. Alright, do make sure to write down 31.38 grams. That's the uh, first heating. So we'll write that there. And we'll go through the process of heating this up a second time. Um, the second heating will um, last another 10 minutes and then, um, oh, sorry, five minutes, and then we'll let it cool down. All right, and then we'll double check the weight measurement of that after the seating <clears throat> and see how we did. All right, so it's been heating for the second heating for um, five minutes, second heating, five minutes. So we're gonna turn off the gas and then Remove the crucible and cover from the clay triangle and ring stand onto our ceramic mat. And we'll be back in another five minutes to get a second mass measurement um, and see after the second heating if we're going to need a third heating um, because we're looking for a difference of um, uh, 0.01. Uh, 0 0.02 grams. So if there's a bigger difference than 0 0.02 grams in either positive or negative direction, uh, then we'll have to do a third heating, and uh, then it should be essentially dry. All right, so it's been five minutes of it cooling after the second heating. Let's get a mass measurement. All right, scale zeroed out. Carefully pick this up. So we're at a 31.23. 31.23. 31 31.23 is substantially different than what we had before. <coughs> if you remember our last measurement before. Oh, it's changing. 31.25. We had a 31.38 before, so we will have to go for a third and final heating just to dry it out. So we'll get our uh, Bunsen burner going again and place our crucible in the flame and we'll heat that for another five minutes for the third heating and then we'll get a mass measurement. All right so it's been another five minutes on our third heating so we're going to just take it off now and let it cool down so we can get a final mass measurement. After it's cooled for five minutes. All right, so it's been five minutes. <clears throat> Let's get our final mass measurement. Oh, I almost touched it with my hand. That would have messed the whole thing up. All right, let's see how we did. 31.24. So we were 31.25. So we are just a tad different, but it's not a big deal. All right. So our third heating was a 31.24. So that's the one we're going to use uh, for all the calculations because it should be the best example of the um, of the dried material so all the hydrated part of it should be completely gone and uh, that would be the most accurate way to calculate it so what you're going to do on your own is figure out the mass of hydrated magnesium sulfate we actually already did that um, that's just four grams um, and then the mass of the anhydrous magnesium sulfate is going to be the difference between this measurement and the measurement of the clean um, dish with cover. So you have to subtract those to get that. Um, the mass of water hydration is going to be the difference between these two, the um, four grams and the difference between this one and this one. And then you can calculate the moles of water and the moles of magnesium sulfate and then you get the mole ratio. Make sure you do the water divided by the 
magnesium sulfate for the ratio. And that will give you the, um, the number that goes in here. Okay. Uh, later I'll tell you what the actual is, although if you look back in the video, you might have seen it in the label. This part will explain all the calculations. Uh, we're going to have a meetup where we can talk about these later and uh, on Zoom on the classroom. So, you know, keep, keep track of when we do that. And uh, if you have any questions about the calculations or anything like that, we can uh, go over it at that time. But this is going to be a lab write-up, so do make sure you use the data and information that we just um, found to help write that lab write-up and then turn it in on the classroom. All right, thanks.